Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming, and thank you so much for joining me today in Meeple Station. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. If you have been following my playthrough of the campaign, you will know we have finished that campaign, and what a campaign that was. I really enjoyed the ending, so please, if you haven't, go check those out. During today's review, I will not be doing any spoilers, so if this is your first time joining us, one, thank you, and two, don't worry. Go ahead, sit back, listen to the review, and see if you want to go and either buy the game for yourself or if you really want to watch me play through the entire campaign. So the game is Meeple Station, and it was released uh, full release on April 10th, 2020 onto Steam. So it's uh, coming up on a year old, about 11 months old at the time of the recording. I played the campaign through release 1.05, and about halfway through... Uh, me playing the campaign, they released 1.06, which, I mean, there were some changes, don't get me wrong, but really the biggest change was they added this uh, compressor here, which changes poo into wood. Um, so really, we played this on 1.05, or 1.0.5 and 1.0.6. Uh, this game was developed by GameClaw Studio and published by GameClaw Studio and Modularity. The Steam description on Steam app is build your way to success, trade your way to the top, explore your way to infamy, infamy, do it all your way. And I would describe this game at its core as a colony sim. So after you design your own space station, you and your meeples are in charge of maintaining it. You have to think about everything from where your meeples will get their meal to where your meeples will let that meal come out of their body, a.k.a using the bathroom and creating poo. Um, this game touches a little bit on trade, a little bit on combat, and a little bit on interacting with those other factions. Uh, as we saw, we had Vigorly Applied Sciences, Pickle and Pickaxe, and the Lokov Initiative, plus the aliens. Uh, but those were never major aspects of the game. At the end of the day, you get to create your own space station, big or small, any way you want it. Uh, I played about 27 hours in the game, uh, and I would say the campaign takes about 7 to 10 hours if you're really pushing. Uh, it took me a little bit longer, obviously because I was working at recording. I had to start and stop sometimes, uh, redo some things. So that's, that's kind of where my 27 hours came from. Plus I recorded the tutorial video, so that was a couple hours as well. Anyway, so the two play modes that are available is the campaign, which we played through and like I said, probably about 7 to 10 hours. And then the free play, free build, where you get to build your own station and kind of do whatever you want. Um, so some pro, some of the pros I thought about this game, Meeple Station, that is, it had a really great mid to late game campaign. Um, the setting up of the story in the first half, quarter to half of the game was really slow in my opinion. The first two hours of gameplay... Uh, was about what I expected. The plot was standard with nothing out of the ordinary really to draw you in. However, at the halfway point, that plot starts to head in a direction I did not expect it to head in. Uh, while you can kind of figure out at certain parts what the ending will be, there are some plot twists that were harder to guess, uh, and I thought that made the overall campaign worth the time getting to the end. Again, if you guys have seen my campaign, and you have seen the ending, I thought that was a fantastic ending. It's not at all what I expected. We were able to guess a little bit of it. We guessed um, one key part, but the the person that makes an, uh, an appearance at the end did not see that coming at all, especially, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that because I don't want to spoil anyways. Anyways, um, so I guess it was refreshing that while most colony sims, or at least the ones I have played, really never give you a complete or closed ending. It was refreshing to finally see a colony sim give you a hard stop, close ending. Here is the end of our story. Thank you so much for playing. Here's free play if you want to keep playing the, the mechanics of the game, basically. So I thought that was really well done, and I was happy to have it. The other thing I liked about, liked about the game, and we'll go to the, the screen here, was the, the job differentiation. So as you can see here, we got... Quite a few jobs you can choose for your meeples, ranging from pilot all the way back up to here, citizen. And that just, I thought, made really, really interesting sense in the game. Um, it can be frustrating at the beginning of the game when you have a very small number of meeples and you got to kind of switch them around. Uh, so they have to do multiple parts. 
But as your st station progresses and more and more meeples joins, I really did appreciate the time and the effort that went into creating each job and the little outfit that each of the meeple were able to wear. I thought that was just, I mean, okay, citizen of minor, basic white and yellow t-shirt, but obviously someone put some time and effort into the, the engineer, the scientist, the janitor, the officer, definitely the hazmeep. Uh, you know, these are, I thought these were just really cool. The pilot reminds me a little bit of Star Wars there. Uh, so whoever did that, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate your, your artistic skills and the time and effort that went into doing that. And we are going to close out of that guard. Um, the next thing I thought that was a, a pro of the game was the graphics and sound effect. While Meeple Station will never be winning any awards for groundbreaking realism or graphics, um, I thought this 2D pixel world was actually very beautiful. Uh, and let's zoom out here. And I just like the colors of the space in the background, the colors on the space station. Um, care was obviously directed towards the fine deal details. Like I mentioned, each job provides the Meeple with a different costume to wear. Good job on that again. Uh, the differentiation certainly adds a lot of flair to the game. Uh, the carpets, and we'll go up here to our living quarters. I thought the carpets, again, in the different tile, someone took time and effort to think and program all that into the game. And it really does allow for some creation of beautiful spaces. And I certainly didn't spend enough time decorating my station. There are plenty of little things under the furniture tab that you could go in and make these rooms look really great. Uh, and, and make a, a living, a truly living space station, if you wanted to. Again, that's not necessarily what I like to do in games, but if that's what you want to do, certainly go for it. Um, for the sound effects, uh, I think, and you can hear it here every so often, is the meeples kind of talking in the background, and I'm putting that talking in air quotes. Uh, in addition to the ambient music, I, I really thought it made for a great atmosphere for, for this type of game. There are some downsides to the game, don't get me wrong, every game has that. Um, like I said, that slow start to the story that we talked about first, um, it does take some time to get to the meat of the story. The initial hook for the plot was weak, and I think that could be improved upon. The starting video was great, but after that, I just thought it kind of fizzled a little bit, uh, and I could definitely see where some people might lose interest in the game and stop playing early on and not be able to make it to the, the strong story aspect of the game. Uh, there was some lack of character development. So while each meeple could be assigned their own job, I never really felt like you were able to grow connected with the characters. We did connect a little bit with Mr. Science, um, and that's just because his name was constantly brought up, especially in the latter half of the story. Um, you know, you go to the screen here, and uh, where's Toothbud at? Um, let's find Toothbud. So Toothbud was our hero, right, that we kind of talked about at the start of the game and you go here and you look at relationships and he likes everyone or their acquaintances and it's green and every everything in here is either green so a positive or neutral i saw what one red on that quick um quick scroll through the activity log we were never really in any trouble of our meeples you know jumping out an airlock or anything like that now granted we were playing on mild in the campaign and i would imagine if you jumped up the intensity of the campaign there might be some different aspects that come into the mood and stamina and whatnot of your meeples but again i just never felt like i was able to really connect with them um same thing with the four other factions in the game uh you know we can we constructed that comms relay here and you can talk to these guys but i mean we can send them a tribute oh thanks man remind me i owe you one no seriously remind me i almost forgot thing i, I forget most things like okay yeah cool but let's go Let's go to the under one and see if it's probably about the same thing. Yeah, you know, cheers, thank you. You really don't get to grow or connect uh, with any of the factions in the story. Uh, so, I mean, again, not that this was really ever meant to be that type of game, uh, and, and you get the basics out of it, but just a little bit more personality development for these different characters on your station and the different um, factions you're interacting with. The other thing that I didn't care for so much in Meeple Station was the combat system. And I know this was not meant to be a combat simulator or anything close to that. I totally get that, and I'm totally happy that this game wasn't that. But in the few parts of the campaign where you had to do combat, it was pretty clunky. Um, the guards, even if you set a rally point, just seemed to go to the rally point and then walk away. They didn't stay there for like a defined period of time. Now, obviously, we built those pillboxes, and that might change things. Maybe when you do a rally point, they go uh, 
staff the pillboxes and don't leave the the pillboxes. Um, but it, again, that was just kind of frustrating that I did when you needed the combat system to work a few times. It, it was a little clunky in my opinion. And the other thing, kind of going along with combat, is we we research these laser turrets and you put them on your space station and you never get to use them. I would have liked to see these bad boys fire off and shoot down a bomber or shoot down some asteroids or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too picky. But we do all this work to put in these laser turrets, and then there there was nothing nothing to to use them against. But okay, it was again not meant to be a combat game, so. We will hold that low on the con list or, or not, you know, not going to make it a big deal. So overall, I was pretty happy with the game. Uh, a solid final half to the campaign makes up definitely for that slow start. I enjoyed the graphics and the sound effects and was able to run it no problem on my basic non-gaming computer. So those of you out there that are using potatoes like myself, this game will run perfectly fine on it. Even I don't think there was any, I think the graphic settings stay the same. Why I was disappointed a little bit in the lack of character and faction development, uh, I'm pretty sure I will live for another day. Uh, I, I recommend you check this game out on Steam, especially if you enjoy Colony Sims or other space-related games. I would recommend purchasing it on sale. I think at this point, the $20 price tag, even at full release, is a little bit expensive for this game. Uh, there, there is plenty of content, don't get me wrong. Like I said, you're probably going to get 7 to 10 hours of the campaign, and then with the free play, you can get however many hours out of it that you want. Um, I just don't think at this point, unless there's any major additions to content, there's a lot of replay value for, for this game. I mean, the campaign, no matter what you do, is always going to have the same outcome. You're never going to, in my opinion, or at least as far as I know, and correct me, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but I don't think whatever you do in the campaign is really going to change the outcome. Um, so again, probably not a lot of um, replay value in this game unless they just come in and dump a bunch of content into it. It was nice, again, to see them add the the processor here, but that wasn't game-breaking or game-making or anything like that, in my opinion. So anyways, overall, I would say if you are interested in Colony Sims or interested in space-related games and you can pick this game up on sale for like 15 bucks, 10 bucks. Uh, certainly do, and it comes bundled with another game, and I am currently blanking. Oh, uh, Rise to, not Rise to Ruins, uh, Re Region Ruins? I don't know. Anyways, I'll put it in the, the link below, but it comes bundled with another game, so if you're interested in that game, it might be worth you checking it out. So hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on down below what you think of Meeple Station, or if you want me to keep doing reviews of games as we kind of finish them up and move on to the next game, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to spend, what are we at, about 13 minutes right now. More than happy to spend a few minutes talking about what I think about the game. And you guys can uh, tell me what you think about the game down below in the comments. And then please don't forget to subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming so you get all this great content on time and in an orderly fashion. Thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next game.